Farmers are coming off of a grueling crop year, but it's time to put 2019 in the rear view and get ready to plant in 2020. Tonight, we'll cover how you can set up your operation for your most successful year yet. And it all starts with the most important pass you make, the planter pass. Good evening and welcome to Rural America Live. I'm Christina Loren. We are joined tonight by the experts from Precision Planting here to discuss the agronomic impact of managing the planter and simple technology to maximize your farm. They'll challenge the status quo and help us understand where you can invest on the farm to get the best return on your investment. But before we get things rolling, let's kick off tonight's show with a short video as we look ahead to the new year. Some of America's hardest working men and women are farmers. Any price drops would affect more than 300,000 farmers. The numbers are off the charts. That hit our farmers and ranchers very, very hard. For all the talk we can do about a trade war, it's in a place like this. What if you could just make all of the challenges go away? We realize there's a lot at stake and your decisions don't get easier. You need success this season. And to do that, your farm has to be profitable. It's difficult to know where to invest first every year, but your farm and family's future depend on it. We believe it shouldn't be that hard to figure out where to get started and that a profitable operation is possible. The most important season to think about right now is this one. That's why we've created the 200 Acre Precision Technology Institute, a resource for growers from around the world to come and learn from over 50 test plots. It's why we've cataloged over 12 million corn plants, created a library of hundreds of soils, and individually weighed 20,000 germinating seeds. Whether you're just beginning to monitor your equipment performance or fine-tuning your equipment to the unique variables of your farm, we're here to help. Talk to one of our dealers. This is your year to know that you're doing the best you possibly can for your farm, your future, and your family. It's all about getting better every year. And that's what our panel of experts from Precision Planting will be talking about tonight. So without further ado, let's meet our guests. First up, we have Doug Wiegand, who's been with Precision Planting for 15 years since the company's infancy. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, Christine, I, I grew up on a farm in central Illinois, uh, as well as our family owned an ag retail business. So I've been working with farmers my, my entire life uh, since I was a young boy. and, and it led me to precision planning, and, and since at precision planning, being at that company at that at, at that young infancy, about 10 full-time employees, uh, we've had a lot of growth. It's been exciting. It's been uh, very humbling to be a part of, um, and I'm really excited where we're headed. So today, I'm the uh, director of North American Sales. Wow. You know what? I really believe in what you have to offer farmers, and that's something that we're going to impact as we head throughout tonight together. But, but what you offer farmers is unique, it's exceptional, and it can help them with their bottom line. And that's what we're all about here at RFD TV. Also from Precision Planting, we welcome Justin McMenemy. Tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for having me on tonight. I've been at Precision Planting for six years, and I have the privilege of being in the role of the director of product. And, and so what that allows me to do is to, to work with our R&D team, to work with our product support team, and to work with our operations team and really see new product development from its infancy when we first have that idea on how to improve a farmer's operation all the way through to shipping that product and getting it onto the, onto the farm. Okay, we also welcome in Jason Webster, commercial agronomist with Precision Planting. You know firsthand, you're a farmer, how hard 2019 has been. Yeah, 2019 was a challenge. Not only am I a commercial agronomist for Precision Planting, going on my fourth year with the company, but uh, I'm a farmer. I guess 2019 was my 32nd year of farming. And I, I will honestly say it was my toughest year of farming because of the challenges that we had. Challenges that we had. But you are all about doing research. And so a year 
You know, like 2019, albeit very tough for farmers, great research opportunity for you. Yeah, I'm our PTI farm, our Precision Technology Institute director, and we've got hundreds of trials that we do every single year, but putting those trials in were definitely a challenge, but at least we had the flexibility, the options, the technology on the planner to battle through the challenges that we had. It was very important and we learned a lot. Okay, well let's tell our audience a little bit more about what you do because it's unique, like we talked about precision planting, how you help farmers improve their bottom line. Tell us more about the company. Well, many of us at Precision Planning as employees also farm or grew up on farms. And so, you know, it's really natural because we're out there in the field uh, starting on the research and development side, but really everybody gets involved in this. That We're looking for agronomic problems that are causing yield robbing events. And when we notice those problems and when we find those problems and, and analyze them and measure them, we then try to create solutions through products and data and control. And uh, once we have those solutions in place, we then take those problems that we've learned uh, and we take them to the dealers and customers and we, and we teach those. We teach them how to teach customers, our dealers as well, and about those problems and how we can help them solve them and increase uh, their yield and ultimately economic opportunity there. Yeah, but you're not, you're not selling heavy equipment. You're not selling the planter. You're not selling the seed. What are you selling? Yeah, we're, we're, really, we're really selling the opportunity to improve the ROI uh, of, their, of their operation. That's really our focus. And so uh, the, the products that we do have that, that, that many uh, customers purchase is kind of a result of that. Okay, so these are products that you can put on a planter that you already have. You might even have one in the shed right now that you can actually use these products on. So let's talk more about that. All right, let's dive right into it. It's interesting that your dealers are able to take complex tasks like you're just talking about, like planting, and simplify it for the farmer and make it easy to get right. How does that work? Yeah, so our dealers have tools uh, like what you see right there um, to evaluate plant stands in the field. Uh, they have tools to calibrate seed meters um, that, that come off the planter that plant the seed. And then in addition to that, they also um, have the ability to check the planter for maintenance. And so, you know, this, this drives, you have to find the problem. If you can't measure what's wrong, it's hard to fix it. You don't know that it's broken, right? So that's really what our dealers focus on. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the products because, I mean, th this is complex technology that you're working with. Yeah. In many ways, you're trailblazing. You're mm. actually the ones carving out this new path. Talk about the approach that you take when you determine the viability of a product and whether or not you should even take one to market. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Yeah, so we have the blessing of having been founded by a farmer. In fact, some of the first products 26 years ago were assembled in a hog shed at the farmstead by local farmers and their families in the winter. From the very beginning, any product that we are considering, there's really one question that we're trying to answer, and that's, is it worth it? Is it worth it for the farmer to invest in the technology, and is he gonna get a return on that, on that investment? And, and as we go through developing technology, we've actually absolutely come across times where we get halfway through the product development, and we find out that it isn't worth it. We find out that the cost of the solution is gonna cost more than the problem it's solving. And so that's the day we stop working on that technology to start working on another technology at, at that same time. And you know, we have a phrase that we use, is we don't just develop a, a motor or a cylinder because it fits there, we develop a motor or a cylinder because it solves a problem that's gonna improve the livelihood of the customer that's using it. It's economically feasible. That's exactly right. Okay, the speed at which precision planting has grown over the years it has been fascinating to watch. Like you talked about, how much it's grown just over the last 15 years. But when you combine technology and natural processes, it can be difficult. Talk about how your products perform and make sense, not just in a controlled setting, like a lab environment, but out yeah. there in a farmer's field where you have time of variability yeah so it's absolutely something that we have to consider you know we uh, we're in central Illinois but when we test a product we, we have to test it everywhere you know we we make the the statement that we want to make sure that those agronomic results aren't just in our fields but they're in your fields we want to make sure that whether it's the rocks of New York or the mud of the Mississippi River Delta that we've run in all of those environments and so really the year before we start selling that product we will install that product across the country and in many instances across the globe so that farmers can test it on their fields on their acres and get a result because as we come to market we want the as we go to the market we want the customer that's using it to have 
understanding of how it's going to work in their county. That's huge. Yeah. Just, just the understanding of the process itself is so important, and that's what you do a great job of is education for your customers. Now, Jason, you talked a little bit about the PTI farm. Tell us a little bit more about it and, and what it does offer the farmers who come out and check it out. Exactly. The PTI farm, the Precision Technology Institute, is a 320-acre research farm. And on this farm, we, what we call, we, what we do on this farm is we challenge the status quo. We take what every farmer is used to, that they feel comfortable with, and we do something different, something opposite, to see if we can do something different to increase yields and ultimately profitability. We also take the equipment that we have, the technology that we have, and we give the keys to brand new equipment, state-of-the-art technology to growers, and we let them experience that technology in what we affectionately call our sandbox. It's an area of the farm that we don't plant, we save it back for July and August, and growers actually get to plant with our technology and demo it. And it's so hard for a grower to demo equipment. You just can't go to your local dealer and say, hey, let me test drive that high speed planter. It's just not feasible. So we allow them to do that in our sandbox and it lets them understand the technology. They see it in the trials that we do at PTI and then they get to experience it and see if it's something that they want for their own farm. Oh, that's awesome. You know, let's talk more about understanding that technology because this is complicated subject matter that we're dealing with. I understand though that you put together a pyramid graphic to kind of explain how your technology helps and how it works. Yeah, so we call this yield count, yield count, uh, or ear count pyramid, I, sorry, ear count pyramid and really it's really what are the high priorities on the farm, and and if I look at the, if I'm going to manage a, a crop into the ground, my highest priority is nutrient nutrient management, and then after that, when I put the seed in the soil, and I've got that foundation of nutrition ready, now I want to have uh, consistent emergence. Once I have consistent emergence, then we want the next priority is uh, consistent singulation, and then spacing, and then population. And ultimately, if we can achieve this, what we've learned is not just with corn or soybeans, but on almost every seed that we have researched, we see a higher um, uh, um, yield potential when we, get, when we get those things right. Higher yield potential is what it's all about. We want to yeah. boost profits, especially in the face of such hardship that we've had to deal with in the farm economy. Okay, it's mid-December. We were talking about the PTI plots that you have out there. A lot of people aren't going to be able to go out and see much this time of year. But what can they do to get education to help them prepare for the 2020 season, which many farmers are definitely thinking about right now? Yeah, well, Christina, this right now we are getting started that uh, we have 24 region sales managers that, that uh, manage uh, North America. Uh, with a lot of dealers behind them that they work with and we can we have planter clinics and so uh, right now a farmer can can jump onto our website um, they can go to local events um, and and all of those planter clinics or all those events at our dealers over 200 of them across the new, across North America are on our website so um, you know in those planter clinics we are teaching and educating um, the the maintenance, the calibration, the management of the planters and of the tools that we sell. Okay, and precisionplanting.com, that's where you can go if you want to find out more about a dealer in your area, if you want to find out more about what they have to offer. Really comprehensive website there for you, easy to navigate, precisionplanting.com, everything is there for you. You can check it out while you're watching the show on your laptop if that's something you like to do. I know that Precision Planting also holds a conference every year. Tell us about the conference, Justin. Yeah, Winter Conference is an event that we host each year. And, and what that does is it gives us the opportunity to share, for instance, the yield results that Jason Webster gets on the PTI farm. It also gives us the opportunity to share yield results from some of our research plots of new products that we're bringing to market. And so we, we also spend time and talk about how to maintain a planter, how, how to make sure that you, that performance vehicle that is the planter is tuned to the, the maximum performance for next year. Uh, we. That the event is January 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. It's live in Tremont, Illinois, but we also have remote locations, 10 remote locations across North America and Canada that, that someone can go to and, and really get the same experience uh, at the remote locations. Uh, and, and registration for that is, is open, and it's at ppwinterconference.com ppwinterconference.com. If you're interested in learning more, be sure to check it out. Again, that's ppwinterconference.com. All right, we're going to pause for a quick break, but when we come back, we'll learn why new equipment isn't always the best way to get new technology on your farm. That's next. More Rural America Live with Precision Planting right after this.
Welcome back to Rural America Live. Joining us tonight, the experts with precision planting. And we're talking about simple tips to maximize your farm using the right balance of agronomy, technology, and equipment. Although we haven't flipped the calendar to the new year just yet, it's time to start thinking about your planning strategy for 2020 to make it the best crop year yet. Joining us once again, precision planting experts, Doug Wiegand, Justin McMinnamy, and Jason Webster. Now we've discussed education, agronomy, and now let's get into the meat of equipment and technology decisions. These are expensive decisions that farmers are making. A number of farmers believe in order to get new technology on the farm, they have to wait and buy that brand new piece of equipment. Talk about how there's a better way. Okay. Um well, right now, you, if I look at the last year, about four to five percent of the farmers in North America purchased a new planter. But what that means is that there's 90, 95 to 96 percent that did not purchase a new planter. And, and even those that did purchase a new planter, we make options to be able to retrofit onto those planters to improve uh, even beyond what they come to the factory. So if, if a guy is happy with his, if a farmer's happy with his row width and row spacing and number of rows uh, on that planter, then, then really if his bar is in good shape, um, we've got dealers that can do everything from, or all of our dealers can do everything from, from add new row units all the way up to all the technology that precision planning uh, makes to retrofit onto those planters. So by doing that, you ultimately have a, a planter that can outperform anything off of a lot uh, oh. from a manufacturer. So you're saying if, if I've got a planter, it's 10 years old, and, and I retrofit it with precision planting technology, it is going to rival the brand new equipment or be better than? Did I hear you right? Yeah, I mean, even even uh, there, uh, there's two planter manufacturers right now that do offer our equipment on brand new planters from the factory. That would be Case IH and, and Agco white planters. Um, and so, but even after they come out of the factory with those retrofit options, there are additional pieces uh, um, of tools, smart sensors and stuff like that, that we can put on there and control systems that make it even better. Make it even better. And, and that's the thing. You talk about being able to do this. The number one thing farmers want to do is make money. Well, if you're not out there spending money on brand new equipment, you have a better chance of holding on to what you have. You're still making wise decisions, getting the most out of that seed. I think it's a no-brainer personally. Justin, what are the economics of retrofitting your current planner instead of buying a new one? What do you have to consider before making a decision like that? Yeah, yeah. everybody knows that money has been tight on the farm over the last five years. And, and when we're looking at investments, whether it be in technology or input, we're, we're really looking at how do we decrease the, the cost of production and, and how do we increase our yield. And, and over the last five years alone on the planter, there's been a lot of technological advancements, whether it's uh, seed metering or the placement of seed or the placement of liquid fertilizer on the planter. And there's even technologies that have come out that can allow you to get more acres planted with the same piece of equipment that, that you have. And, and for most companies, the, the way that they bring that technology to the market is, is through a new planner, through new equipment. And, and we just fundamentally believe that, that there's a better way. We fundamentally believe that, that providing that technology onto the existing planner is, is the way to, to bring that to the market. Uh, was, over the last couple months alone, we've had conversations with some of our customers. There's, this is uh, Brad Tice in, in La Center, Minnesota. Uh, he has a, a 2010 DB80 planter. So it's a, it's a 10 year old planter and, and he's run that across a lot of acres. And, and he wanted to get some of these technologies that, that are new to the, to the industry. And so he went to his local deer dealer and he, he got a quote for trading it in on a, on a new DB80. And the quote came back at $350,000. And so he, he also looked, he said precision planning, they, they offer technology that can go onto my existing DB planter and so he worked with Porter Ag Solutions, one of our dealers in Iowa, and, and he looked and he said, I want better placement of the seed. I want better placement of the fertilizer on my planter, and, and I want more sensors. I, I want to have better information of, of what's going on. And, oh, by the way, it's a 10-year-old planter, so I need to go through the planter and replace bearings and replace bushings and replace gauge wheel arms and all that. All of that, basically bringing the mechanics right back up to the 
to the, the spec, as well as adding technology, the quote came back at $125,000. Wow. And so when you think about the market that we're in, if you can get a 65% off coupon Ooh. on a $350,000 bill, that's definitely worth a second look. That's huge. They say 40% you're winning, but you boost that up to 65%. That's outstanding. Now, some farmers really get attached to their equipment. They'll have a planter that they don't want to give up. Maybe it was dad's planter. Is there such thing as too old when it comes to equipment that would be feasible for this your uh, precision planting technology? Is it too old? Is that such a thing? Yeah, so uh, there, there are many planters. I mean, some of the John Deere planters that you can put technology on are, are there from uh, even when I was in elementary school. Wow. That was a while ago. <laughs> uh, but but there, are, there are some planters that the row units are, are worn out. They've crossed a lot of acres and precision planting through our retrofit dealers can even replace all of the row units. So, so really the bar, if the bar's in good shape, that's really all you need to, uh, to add technology to the planner. Wow, okay, so we talked about the what you can do. Now let's talk to somebody who's actually done it. You were able to retrofit your planter. Talk about that experience, the benefit, and of course, the cost savings. Yeah, there's no reason for us to, to look at buying a new planter, having that large expense, and we could take two existing planters that we already had. We, we took two 16-row planters, one for our research farm and one for our home family operation, and we retrofitted those 16-row planters. So here we've got two planters, one that's almost 10 years old, one that's almost 20 years old. We retrofitted them with precision planting equipment, and we've got a brand new planter at half the cost. Wow. It was a no-brainer for us, and we've got state-of-the-art technology that's better than a new planter. Man, you're an agronomist, so you really take these considerations very, very carefully. i got to ask you, though, what happens when you have a tractor that is older, you put this brand-new technology on it, and then the other parts on the tractor start wearing down? Is it still economically feasible at that point? Oh, absolutely, yeah. We, we, we can have some of our latest technology from precision planning and some older tractors out there. As long as we have the hydro hydraulic capacity as well as the electrical capacity, there's no reason those won't, won't work just fine. Okay, and when you're talking about making a huge capital investment, especially in the face of economic uncertainty with trade, you don't know what's gonna happen with weather, mm. you might be saving a little bit of money this way, getting yourself in a much better position technologically. And uh, I just think a lot of farmers can really take advantage of what you have to offer. You're taking what they have now, making it better than what's available right off the lot. Mm, so that's absolutely. outstanding. That's right. As farmers mm -hmm. are making those important decisions for 2020, let's talk about maintenance because that's also part of it. Just like with your body, you want to maintain it so you don't have to go to the doctor down the road. <laughs> you want to maintain your vehicle, you want to maintain your equipment so it doesn't break down. Some key aspects of the planter to consider. Let's go over those because these come into play as well. Well, yeah, Christina, at our winter conference in January, that's just going to be about a month away at this point. Um, you, can, you can find that, you can register for that at precisionplanning.com, but at that conference we're going to have an entire hour just focused on maintenance and, and calibration and operation of that planter clinic, so, but, uh, or of that planter. But here's a few critical things that I can t uh, talk through with you on as far as things that drive, um, very important to drive for, for good emergence, consistent emergence, because as we remember back, that was the foundation of that ear count pyramid. So disc openers, for example, uh, when, a, when a planter's disc openers are brand new, many of them are 15 inches. Uh, some brands are 14 inches, some brands are 15, but we recommend that as soon as a disc opener is, is worn by a half of an inch, then we want to replace it. So for example, if it's brand new at 15 inches, as soon as it hits 14 and a half inch diameter, uh, it's time to replace that. And the reason that's so important is because uh, we're planting 13 to 15 seeds per second at five mile per hour, it just with, with corn. And we get into soybeans and other crops, it can be double or even triple that every second. And we're trying to get uh, perfect singulation spacing and, and emergence. And in order to do that, you have to have good depth. So with disc openers in, we wanna make sure that the contact point between those two disc openers it is is the proper contact point for the thickness of that particular blade. So uh, by taking two business cards, measuring the contact on each side, and and adjusting the shims in or out for that disc, we can get a, a better a better um, result there or get the proper um, clearance that we want. In addition to that, the next thing would be gauge wheels. Once we have those disc openers shimmed. 
Well, we want to go to the gauge wheel shimming and shim those gauge wheels in to the point where they're um, slightly scrubbing those disc openers. If your gauge wheels are loose or if there's a gap at all between the disc opener and that gauge wheel, what can happen is you're going to have dry dirt that's going to flow into that gauge wheel. That dry dirt is then going to flow into the seed trench right behind the seed tube mm -hmm. before the trench even hits the trench. And you're going to have a lot of depth variation. You're going to have a lot of dry dirt around that seed. So it's critical to get, you can see in that video right there, uh, there's a lot of dry dirt that's flying, flying out. Those, yeah. those gauge wheels are not tight to the disc opener. All the money on earth on that planter is not going to fix that problem agronomically. Okay, so that's a big deal. And then the last thing we focus on is closing wheel alignment and spacing between between uh, the closing wheels. So when I, t when I talk about alignment, uh, as you travel forward, what you want is you want to make sure as you're traveling forward that those two wheels are centered over the seed trench. Imagine if you're driving a truck and your back tires are three feet to the left of your front tires as you're driving down the interstate. It wouldn't work very well, nope. would it? <laughs> What's not going to work very well here planting if, that's, if that closing wheel is not lined up in the direction of that seed trench. And then the second thing is we want to make sure that that closing wheel system is spaced. Those two wheels are spaced properly for the depth that you're going to plant. So, for example, that inch and a half that you see on the left, if I'm going to plant an inch and three quarter to two and a quarter like a lot of farmers do with corn, that's too narrow. It's going to close on top, but it's not going to close down around the seed. It's going to give you a false hope. The, uh, and then if I go too wide and I go to the right hand side at three and a half inches, now you're so wide you're going to close on the bottom, but not on top. Hmm. And so if I'm in that inch and three quarter to two inch, two and a, uh, two and a quarter inches like a lot of corn, corn planting is, we want to see about that two and a half inches. That two and a half inches would be the center of the tire to the center of the tire. Not the gap, but the actual center of the tire at the closest point. And we find that that gives us a good job of closing that seed to soil contact all the way up through that trench. Okay, when it comes to planting and getting that seed in the ground, you get one opportunity to get it right. And that's, so that's right. this that's technology right. is so critical as you build that foundation for a high yield. But say I'm a farmer who's watching, okay, I see what I need to do but I don't know how to get it exactly right. How can I get involved in what precision planning is doing? How do I go to my dealer? How, how do I get that precision technology on my planter? Yeah, so um, if you do go to our dealers, that's correct. We have dealers. You can go to the website, uh, precisionplanning.com. Uh, you can go to the dealer locator, and that's going to and that's going to show you who your, your, your uh, closest dealer is uh, to you in that area. Uh, in addition to that, we've got the planter clinics all over the country, and so that's going to help to educate you on whether you're making a wise economic and agronomic decision as well. Okay, precisionplanting.com. You can have a dealer come out and, and show you the maintenance tips that you can do very very affordably that can make a big difference in your yields. What were you going to say? Paula? I was going to say, and, and Doug, you know, you, you don't have to be a precision planting customer to go to a planter clinic. I mean, the dealers are, are they are they are the in county experts on planters, and their passion is is teaching. Their passion is improving yields, and, and oftentimes the planter maintenance is the highest return on investment that you can have on the farm. Yeah, and you don't have to do it alone. You can get help. Call your dealer. That's Go right. to precisionplanting.com. They want to help you. They want to help you make more money, keep more of that money in your pocket. All right, we've also been talking about planting. When it comes to peace of mind, it can be incredibly valuable. Give us the farmer's perspective using that 2020 technology, just knowing that that seed is going into the ground precisely. Yeah, I can remember the first time I used the 2020 and had eyes in the field. And it's just incredible confidence that you gain knowing how well your planter is finally performing. And in the past, without having the eyes in the field, you question, am I doing the right job? How much money is it costing me? Now we have a device in the field that shows us that. And the very first time that, that I saw the monitor all green, if you will, showing me that everything was working perfect, it's just confidence. And I feel very good about what we're doing and that we're not losing money in the field. It's just tremendous technology, eyes in the field. It's information that we're getting that we, we never, ever got before. And, and confirming as well. Confirmation, it, validation, that's exactly it. right. That's it. And so you continue that good peace of mind. Now, you've also found it's important to measure the actual planting depth of every row unit prior to actually going out into the field how do you do that, yeah. first of all, and, and how valuable is it? Yeah, 
Yeah, planting depth is one of those sacred settings on the farm. You know, 40 years ago, Grandpa taught us to plant our corn at the second knuckle on the index finger, and 40 years later, that's still where, where the corn goes in. And, and for a lot of guys, they'll pull the planter out of the, out of the shed, and they'll go out, and they'll set the T-handles to where Grandpa taught us to, and they'll start planting. And usually in that first field, they'll stop and they'll, they'll dig a few rows and, and make sure that the seed is getting into moisture, make sure that the, the depth is, is where they set it. And, and what we found over the last couple of years is that for most planters out there, there's about a half an inch of variation, maybe up to five eighths of an inch, that you can set the T-handles on every row unit the exact same, but from row to row, there's a half to five eighths inch of variation. So if we're just stopping and we're just digging one row or two row, it may look good, but the rest of the row or another row on the planter may be a problem all year long. A couple years ago, we were working with Parkland Community College and they were running a four row planter and they were putting in agronomic plots across the year. So they put in their corn plots, they put in their soybean plots and, and they planted a soybean plot on, on May 31st towards the end of the year for them. And uh, they, they sent the scout out five days after to, to look at emergence, and the scout took a photograph of what he saw in the field. What he saw in the field was that one of the rows was, something was wrong. And when you go into a plot, and, and this is the photograph you take, you learn that morning that you're not researching what you thought you were researching this year. So he took his knife out and he started digging in those rows. Because you got to ask yourself a question, is, is it metering, is it seeding, where, where, what caused this problem? I and mean, we had one shot this year, and we got a fourth of our crop that looks like this. And, and what he found was that each of the soybeans were in the trench. The, the meter had dropped those soybeans, and those soybeans were, were swollen. They had absorbed some moisture and they were swollen, but there wasn't enough moisture to germinate, and there wasn't enough moisture to emerge. And it looked to him, it said, man, it just seems like the soybeans were planted shallower on this first row than on the rest of the planter. So they go back to the shed and they pull the planter out and they look at the planter and gauge wheel arms look fine, opening disc looks fine. Well, they back it onto the concrete pad, they sit the gauge wheels onto some blocks and they, they set the T-handles where they're supposed to be and what they found was row one was seeding five-eighths of an inch shallower than the rest of the rows. And so in this field here, there was enough moisture on rows two, three, and four to swell the seed, to germinate, and to get to emergence. But that shallower row on row one, there wasn't enough moisture there. So they asked the question, they said, well, none of this showed up in the corn plots. We, we've scouted the corn plots for weeks and we didn't see this. So they go back to the corn plots and they start digging. And what they found is that on row one, on those corn plots, just the same as in the soybean plot, the corn had gone in five-eighths of an inch shallower. But there was one difference. The one difference was is when they had put the corn plots in, the following weekend, they'd gotten a nice rainstorm mm. came through. And so all the moisture that was needed for germination came from the sky. But this soybean plot that went in, there was no rain that came in behind. And so only moisture that could get into germination was already in the ground. So a year like 2019, where there was plenty of moisture either in the field when you were going through or on the horizon coming in right behind you, an issue like this wouldn't show up. But as we come into a dry year, if we ever get a dry year, I think we might someday, but <laughs> yeah. if we ever get a dry year, this could really cost the farm. And so what we do is we recommend that guys, as they're bringing the planter out of the shed, to sit the gauge wheels onto blocks, set the T-handle where grandpa told them to set the T-handle, set it where they're going to plant their corn, and measure the distance from the ground of every gauge wheel. And they'll see that there is differences, and that can allow them to then make adjustments to the planter before they get into the field, rather than learning after it's already too late. After the fact, because you get one chance. One chance, yeah. One chance to get right. it right. And I mean, when you're talking about somebody's livelihood, you want to get it right. Okay, eventually that planter ends up in the field, though. So you calibrate, you get it ready. You need the confidence that that planter is going to continue to perform well. How can a grower have that confidence that their planter is performing at an optimal level once they're in the cab. Yeah, we, we asked ourselves that for years, and back in 2008, we came out with a, with a system called the 2020 system. And it's a monitor that, that farmers put in their cab, in the tractor, it's hooked to the planter, and, and it's just going to give them, it's going to measure and analyze to a higher level. Prior to the 2020, when you'd go to the field back on my farm, you'd have your fingers crossed, you'd hope everything's going to work, and you had to wait two weeks to see the stand come out of the ground before you really knew if it performed to the level that you wanted. And once we put a 2020 on, 
Then we come in here, and I'll just show you this display here. Uh, we have population, just like every display had before, uh, that we can look at this, the, the uh, number of seeds per row. If I touch the population, it's going to take me to a full screen bar graph. That full screen bar graph is going to show me on every row what, what the planting's uh, seeds per acre is. If I then want to look at a row that, that is out of whack, and I just touch at uh, row two because it was a little bit lower, it's going to then take you to a row t two details uh, segment or screen uh, in depth level. It's going to show me at the bottom all these little uh, little push pins that it's showing is basically represents a seed. So anytime there's a skip, it's going to show me an X. It's going to if there's a double, it's going to show um, a, a red plant. Uh, and and if there's a uh, if there's a spacing error, it's going to show a yellow plant. So by looking at this as an operator, I know if that if that uh, row is planting uh, um, accurately. Uh, so when I go back home, then what about uh, some of the other metrics? Well we can look at singulation and now I know that meter that I took and had calibrated or that I just purchased is it really singulating at 99.7 like the dealer said it would and you can see that it is and you know if there's any rows that are out of whack and then we have a good ride as another metric that really nobody else nobody else had but you can see it here on the right hand side and that good ride is basically an accelerometer that's on the row unit and if that row unit's moving through the field at a pretty rough pace, uh, it's going to tell you that your row unit rides rough. It's going to tell you uh, that you need to slow down. Many times farmers have come back to me after running the 2020 uh, uh, for a very short period of time or a year, and they said, you know, my tillage is too rough. I had to slow down. I would normally plant five and a half mile an hour. And I put the 2020 on, and I ended up having to slow down to 3.2 ah. because if I planted beyond that, it got too much. And then... So it really gives you the metrics to know how to manage that planter. It's not just telling you uh, where, when, the, when, the, um, uh, when it's broken, but it's telling you how to manage it. And then the last thing would be downforce. Downforce is telling us if we have enough weight on applied to that gauge wheel or to that row unit to maintain seating depth, okay. as, as Justin just referenced. So the planter is actually having a conversation with the field, and you are the observer. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I, you know, Christine, I've often I've often said that the greatest operator on earth will never fix a problem that he doesn't know exists. That's great. And so the 2020 gives him those eyes on the planter to really understand what's happening. That's so wonderful that you're able to bring those issues to light for farmers as well and help them capitalize on their investment. Okay, Precision Planting has developed a number of sensors to, to do this, to make this work. It's through the sensors. What's happening in the field and on the equipment? I believe that you brought a sensor to show us. Yeah. Show us how that works. Yeah, so one of the very first products that Precision came out with many years ago it was called the Keaton Seed Firmer. And the, the Keaton Seed Firmer, was a, a, a device that went onto the back of the row unit. And, and the, really the purpose of the Keaton seed firmer is to just put a little bit of pressure on every seed inside of that trench or inside of that furrow to make sure that the seed is pressed down into the bottom of the trench so that we don't get any air gaps and we get good seed to soil com contact. And it was about five, six years ago that uh, w within R&D, within the engineering group, uh, Derek Souter, who is the kind of the founding R&D member of Precision Planting, and Jason Stoller and, and Dale Cook are talking about all this research that's been done. And this research that, that highlights to a farmer that the need for good moisture in the furrow, the, the need for temperature, what, what temperature is the right temperature to plant into, the cost of, of having residue hairpinned into the furrow, and, and the value of having knowing your organic matter. And, and, and all of these research studies had pointed to the importance of these things. But the conversation centered around how little we knew about our farm, how little any farmer knows on those things. They matter, temperature matters, moisture matters, but aside from getting out of the tractor and digging in one little spot, I, I don't have information. And so that really that birthed the idea of we have the Keaton seed firmer, it's, it's in the trench, it's in the furrow, it's right there next to every seed on the very first moment that it starts its life uh, headed towards yield. What, what if we could put a camera on the on the on the firmer and so so that really birthed smart firmer which allows a farmer to put sensors into the furrow into the trench and now they know the temperature 
every day, every pass, every field, they know the moisture. And, and what we find is just to provide that information, it equips the grower to, to make better decisions. Uh, we, we launched Smart Firmer a couple years ago, and there was a gentleman uh, in, in Holly Bluff, Mississippi, by the name of Smith Stoner, and, and he was really excited to get more information on his uh, operation and on his planter pass. And so he put a number of Smart Firmers on his, on his John Deere planter, and uh, he, he tells a story. He says, you know, I've been, I've been farming these fields my entire life. And he said, I, I, I feel like I know the, the, the soul of some of these fields. And he talks about one field where, where there's, a, there's a culvert kind of running east to west. And he says on the north side of that field is a really light sand. And on, on the south side of that field is a pretty tight buckshot clay. And he said, you know, I feel like I know how that field responds. He said, if it rains, the, the, the moisture is just going to kind of pass right through that sand and that buckshot clay is going to hold it tight. He said, with this smart firmer, he goes out, he starts planting that field just like he has year in and year out. And he said, the smart firmer this year, though, is telling a little bit different story. It's saying that at that two inches that I've always planted my corn, I'm not into moisture in the buckshot clay, but I am getting moisture at, in the sand, in the north side of the field. And he mm -hmm. said, so with that information, I, I stop the planter and I get out and I start digging in that buckshot clay. And, and sure enough, there isn't moisture at two inches in that, in that tight clay. And he said, so I, I kind of, my grandpa rolled over in his grave and I reached <laughs> for those T handles and I adjusted the T handles down another quarter inch and I kept planting. So he did about five or six more rounds and he saw that the moisture was getting better in that buckshot clay, but it still wasn't uniform. Not every seed wasn't getting the same amount of moisture wrapped around it to give it good germination to even emergence to maximize the yield. So he said, I got out and I dug some more. And he found that sure enough, he wasn't quite into moisture yet on the south side of that field. And so he adjusted his T-handles again down another quarter inch. And, and he, he talked to our engineer that was with him in the cab that night. And he said, you know, the ability for Smart Firmer to give me that information allowed me to make an adjustment. And he said, I believe that these Smart Firmers paid for themselves tonight. Wow. Now, the tail of the tape, he has to come back with the combine 100 days later and find out if that's true or not. And he was over the moon excited to call us and show us his yield maps as he went through. As, as he started that field uh, the, at the depth that he's always planted at, he, this year he pulled out 246 bushel. And for most of us out there, a 246 bushel is, is nothing to be disappointed with. And in fact, we'd be pretty happy with that. Uh, what he saw is in the 10 acres where he adjusted by a quarter inch, he saw a five bushel increase. Now, as we think about that, that's the same seed, the same tractor, the same farm, the same weather, the same nutrients. Everything was the same, except for one quarter inch on the morning or on the evening of planting. And then he said, well, after I adjusted again, I finished out the field and he saw a 16 bushel increase Ooh. from that 246 that he baseline. Again, same seed, field, farm, farmer, input. The, the input side of this all set but the yield side, he had plenty of opportunity just because he had information and he was able to make a, a better decision. And he, he wasn't wrong. On that field, there, he was paying for a smart firmer every 10 acres <laughs> with that ability to have that information. Because that data was made available to exactly. him. His, his father didn't have it. His grandfather didn't That's have correct. it. Right. But he's got it, and he can pass it down to his son as well or daughter. Okay, there you have it. Smart firmer technology, putting eyes in the furrow, providing you with vital information that will maximize the planter pass. We're going to pause for a quick break, but when we come back, we'll talk about fertility plans that challenge the satisfaction quo with our panel of experts from Precision Planting. More Rural America Live right after this. Welcome back to Rural America Live with Precision Planting. Tonight is all about putting the historically challenging crop year behind us and getting you ready for the 2020 planting season. Joining us once again on set, Precision Planting experts Doug Wiegand, Justin McMinney, and Jason Webster. Now we've talked about the confidence that the 2020 monitor and smart firmer technology can provide. But Jason, I know you've done a lot of starter fertilizer trials as well at the PTI farm. Talk about about the results. Yeah, that's right. So some of our starter fertilizer trials involve a product that we have called FuroJet. 
And FurrowJet is a unique way for us to apply liquid fertilizer in the furrow. And I'll kind of hold this up to the camera here, and you can see FurrowJet is is wings has wings, and we have center center uh, center orifice here where we can apply liquid fertilizer close to the seed. But then we have wings that will apply liquid fertilizer three quarters of a uh, three quarters of an inch away and higher. So it gives us flexibility with high volumes, different salt salt loads of product, all not just on the seed. So that's our furrow jet. That's how we're actually applying fertilizer. One of the things I'll shift over here to this box that shows where the application points are with a furrow jet. You can see the orange orange sections here on the, by the corn roots. That's actually where furrow jet is applying liquid fertilizer. And you, as you think of a young plant just emerging and coming up out of the ground, that's when we want to be able to apply phosphorus to get it off to the best start possible. And these orange applications here, here again is the center, and then we've got the two wing applications off to the side. So this is going to offer us a chance to relay, not only feed that seminal root system as that corn plant is very young, but then we can tr uh, transition to the crown roots for that relay to give it the best possible start it can. Okay. Now you've also mentioned nitrogen trials. Talk about those results. Yeah, nitrogen is a huge component of growing high yield yes. corn. If we're gonna grow high yield corn, we've gotta get our management program right. And at the PTI farm, I think we test nearly 20 different programs of how growers apply nitrogen today. And the question is, is who's right and who's wrong? And so for me, in our family farming operation and on the research farms, we've been putting half our nitrogen down early and then the other half, the other 50% is a side dress application post. And so that's kind of my baseline or my status quo, if you will. We mentioned earlier that we're always challenging the status quo. That's my status quo. And you'll see on the graph here that the, the crosshairs, the blue lines and that, that blue, blue uh, graph line right in the middle is my status quo, my program. But look at, the, look at all the programs to the left of the screen, the left of the crosshairs. Those are programs, nitrogen programs, that are beating me. Wow. And that's the humbling experience about the whole thing, knowing that you're wrong. <laughs> and this is what a lot of growers need to realize at home. They may be doing the right thing, but they need to compare it to another program that could be better. That's what we're hunting for. That's what we're searching for every year. So it's always challenging the status quo, finding programs that'll be better. And what we're finding is over the last three years, by applying nitrogen on the planter is equating to yield um, a return on investment of over $60 an acre. And I guess the thing that's important here is we're not putting on any more nitrogen at all. Huh. It's the same rate of nitrogen <laughs> by applying nitrogen on the planter. And I'll go back to the box if we can here to show how we're applying the nitrogen. Okay, we'll go back to the box. Hopefully we can get that on screen here. The blue lines <laughs> on the screen, here we go. Yeah, the, the blue box, or the blue, uh, the blue sections here, that's going to be our conceal. There, there we go. There's the blue lines here. These are three inches away from the furrow, and we're going to apply this product about an inch and a half deep. So remember the furrow jet that we talked about, the yellow application or the orange application points, that's going to be the first relay to really give us that first phosphorus advantage. But then we come in with conceal, and we can go with single band or a dual band application. The video you're seeing now, we're going we're gonna to come into a side shot of this thing. It's going to swing around a little bit. You'll see the knives are in the center of the gauge wheel. We're using existing space on the planter to make this application. We can do it in a single or band, but this is going to be a single or dual band application. This is where we're going to apply products like nitrogen, sulfur, boron, products that really aren't safe in the furrow, but we can put three inches away safely, but yet the crop can get that, that product fast and efficiently. It's, it's, it's luxury product is what we call it. Luxury product. Farmers are always wondering, how can I do more with less? How can I spend less on input costs and get more out of my yield? And this is a perfect example. Something else that I love about you, I was watching an example of an interview of you, and you said, oh. I never want to be average. It was on Brownfield Agnes. Oh, you said, I yeah. always want to get better. And boy, yeah. do you really live this out in your research and your farming. Yeah. And this year, going into 2020, based on what you've learned last year, what are you going to take into consideration? Yeah, split applications of nitrogen are huge for us at the PTI farm. One of the things that, that we've seen, you know, $60 return on investments by just the way we apply nitrogen. You know, we know that by, by, by putting a second shot of nitrogen on, we can increase yield. But the fact that we can put on uh, nitrogen on the planter and get additional gains. And again, we're not changing the rate of nitrogen. We're using the same rate of nitrogen we've always done in the past. 
But increasing farm family profitability by $60 <laughs> an acre, an average farmer growing 1,000 acres of corn, that's $60,000 of extra farm family income. That's powerful. That is powerful, especially, you know, we talk about that around Christmas time. Mm. And boy, oh boy, you're starting to make those plans for the planting season. You might have an easier Christmas next year <laughs> if you make wise decisions <laughs> as we move forward. Okay, tell us about the furrow jet. Yeah, so the furrow jet is that center application. Um, that we talked about earlier. We've got the three bands of application here. And again, that's setting the stage um, for that phosphorus ty typical application for us. Phosphorus doesn't move in the soil, so we can't put it far away. Um, here's some results that you're seeing on the screen. This is from a 620-4 with a little bit of zinc. And, and we're seeing some really nice returns from really all of our starter trials. But the thing I want to have, have growers think about here is that if we're going to put starter fertilizer on, say with FurroJet, we need to think about reallocation of fertilizer. Fertilizer. I've always said to growers, kind of kiddingly, that a starter fertilizer program should be free. It shouldn't cost us anything because we soil test, we know what our buildup and, and our maintenance levels are, and we're going we're gonna to take those dollars off of our dry program in the fall to account for the liquid program we're using through FurrowJet. So we're always backing our costs down to account for the liquid. And just in this example you're seeing on the screen, we're seeing net advantages of almost $25 of the acre, an wow. additional 25 that's over and above the cost of the product. So tremendous return for the grower by being able to utilize a fertility or crop nutrition system like this. If growers are wondering, what is the return on investment going to be? How quick is that payback? Yeah, we tell growers we want a one-year payback. One and we've got year. many products at Precision Planning that will offer uh, return on investment in just one year. And that's important in the economy we're in today yes. with the prices we're at and the costs we're at. If we're going to invest in this technology, it's got to pay off quick. I don't want a five-year. I don't want a 10-year payoff. It's got to be a one- to two-year to make this thing successful. Well, as long as farmers are out there working, we know that agronomic problems are going to be a challenge they for will. them. And yes. so, you know, you're always going to be in business. What are your final thoughts? Maybe someone's out there, a farmer, thinking, you know what? I have a planter. I like it. I'm not ready to go out and buy a new one. I like what they have at Precision Planting, but I'm not quite convinced. What would you say to that farmer? Yeah, my, my final thoughts is, you know, as you, as you talk to growers, it was a long year. You know, I had a friend of mine from South Dakota. We spent time with him last week, and he said, you know, from my accountant's perspective, 2020 is going to be a double crop year because I'm going to be taking 2019's corn out after New Year's, and yeah. then I'm going to put next year's crop in as well. And, and for a lot of guys, that, that can be a, man, it was a long year. It was a tiring year. Yeah. My, my final thought would be, you know, e even in the instance where the budget doesn't have room, a lot of room for technology or a lot of room for, for equipment, Maintenance is, is, is think about the planter pass as a performance pass. And, and as, as you before you get that planter out of the shed and before you take it to the field, really think about uh, having a precision planting dealer dig through that planter and look through that planter and look for problems. Those are problems that are going to cost yield. They're going to cost cost us issues. And and many times the the ROI of, of Planner maintenance is the highest ROI investment that you can have wow, on the farm. Wow, that's interesting. That's a fun fact. I think a lot of farmers may not be aware yeah. of. Doug, right. okay, we've got about a minute. Final thoughts. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, there's a lot of farmers that come to me and they'll ask me um, over the years and e even to this day, what is the one thing you would do if you was going to buy something from Precision Planning? And, and my answer is always a 2020 seed sense. So the 2020 in the cab is going to give you, it's going to measure everything on your planter. It's going to tell you where your weak spots are. And again, like I said earlier, you can never fix it, something if you don't know it's broken. And so the 2020 seat sense is going to be your management onboard system. And, and it's going to help you to, to figure out where to improve things. And then ultimately check out the events on, on, w, on, on precisionplanning.com and, and come to our winter conference. We're going to have a, our, our, our live location in Tremont, Illinois. We have 10 simulcast locations all over North America. Uh, so we'll be excited to host... Uh, host uh, farmers all over the country for that. Oh, I'm sure that the farmers, the more farmers who use your products are gonna come up and shake your hands after they get that return on investment that we've been talking about tonight. Love what you're doing. Can't wait to have you back on the show to find out more about what farmers are doing with Precision Planting, precisionplanting.com for more information. Thank you for joining us. Have a beautifully blessed night. Mm -hmm.